I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke is retired. When Manila was attacked in December 1941, our submarine force in the Philippines consisted of only two squadrons. Among these ships was the S-38, one of the smaller, old-type submarines. The story we are about to bring you concerns this ship and its heroic action during the Japanese invasion of the Dutch East Indies. The performance demanded of this boat by its crew could never have been anticipated by its builders. Let's see what happened. The Japanese attack on the Dutch East Indies began December 22, 1941. Their superior invasion forces were opposed by a handful of Dutch, British, and American warships. But the enemy was invincible. First Barneo, then Sumatra, then the island of Celebes fell to the advancing conquerors. By February 11, 1942, only Java remained in our hands. The word went out. Every effort was to be made to hold that island. On February 20th, the remaining Allied forces, consisting primarily of cruisers and destroyers, formed a combined force to intercept the expected invasion of Java. Among these ships was the USS S-38, commanded by Lieutenant Henry G. Munson of Alexandria, Virginia. Assigned station in Madeira Strait, the S-38's mission was to attack any landing force headed for the Dutch naval base at Surabaya. During the early morning of February 27th, the S-38 received urgent orders to proceed to Bowian Island. A Japanese landing party had captured the town of Sankapura. Bombardment of the enemy was requested if feasible. Our intelligence indicates the Japanese have four 75mm guns at Sankapura. Now the request for a bombardment said, if feasible. We don't have to do it. It's not a matter of having to do it, Red. I want to do it. With four 75s against us? They're only three inches. With our four inch, we've got them beat. Well, in range, maybe, and ours pack more of a wallop, but it's still four against one, Captain. If we surface and start firing at 0700, they'll be climbing out of their sacks or eating breakfast. We get off five rounds, and they'll stop eating breakfast. We'll keep the deck about six inches out of the water. The conning tower will be their only target. That would help. Wouldn't give them much to shoot at. See, we have 74 rounds, figure six seconds per round, surfacing and diving time. About nine minutes. Make it an even 10, Red. They can't get too well organized in 10 minutes. We hope. I'm gonna have a look at the charts. Take the con. Right. Preparation for the bombardment began. Shells for the deck gun were piled near the ammunition scuttle. Jumbo Seckle was first loader. Bill Sink, second loader. It would be their jobs to see that the gun was kept hot. Captain Munson briefed his gunnery officer on the point of aim. The Dutch government building was chosen as the most likely place for Japanese headquarters. Lieutenant Lennox would remain below to watch through the periscope for signs of enemy counteraction. 0645, the S-38 entered the harbor at Sankapura, close to within 2,000 yards of the beach. Surface! The shelling of Bowian Island brought answering fire from only one enemy gun. It was immediately silenced. Secure attack gun! Stand by to dive! Let's go! We sure gave it to him, Red. Take a look.
taking us so long to get out? We got rid of a lot of weight. We put it where it'll do some good. They sure know we've been here. Left full rudder, steady on course 175. Left full rudder, steady on course 175. After the successful bombardment of Bowie, the S-38 resumed patrol. Comfort on the old S-boat was out of the question. The bright tropic sun and the water of the Java Sea made inside temperature soar to over 100 degrees. The crew looked forward to night when the boat surfaced to charge batteries and the big diesel engine sucked in cooler air. I said, look, I can't box. The wrestling team's okay with me, but I'm no boxer. I said, I'll teach you. You can be champ. Yeah, you and Joe Lewis. By the time the war's over, Joe Lewis will be too old. So will you. You gonna let me finish this story? I said, look, I don't want to hurt anybody. I ain't got the feeling for hurting people. You know, you're gonna have that killer instinct they talk about. Me, if I see anybody hurt, I get sick in the stomach. You know what he said to me? Tell me what he said and then move, will you? Said, you must be yellow. I'd have slugged him. What do you think he's back in the States for now? I have his jaw wide in two places. You don't pay attention to the game. Sorry to wake you, Red. I don't know how long this thing's gonna last. Better take a look. What do you make of it? It's a big battle, that's for sure. Probably that showdown we've been expecting. We going any closer? Now we're on the edge of our area now. We must have a big task force out there. What makes you think so, Captain? I've been watching the star show pattern. It's ours. Now, oh, that pattern doesn't necessarily mean anything. Do you think the Japanese are using it? Well, they've borrowed nearly everything else from us. Why not our star shell pattern? You're right, but you don't have to be so darn practical. Can't I wish us a victory? That would be a nice change. Oh, 200. I'm gonna try to get a couple hours sleep, Red. Red? Yes, sir. Did you say something? No, sir. Look out, were you talking? Wasn't me, Captain. Came from off the starboard somewhere. Did you hear it? I thought it came from below. No, I was just down there. It's off the port side now, Captain. There's somebody out there, Red. Look out! Do you see anything? No, sir. Help! Do you think it's a trick? Possibly. Help! Help! Battle stations, gun action! Battle stations, gun action. Is he kidding? We haven't got any more ammunition. Come on. Help us! Help us! Captain, you want me to bring up the searchlight? No, Sam, let's not give them a target. The way sound travels on the water, they could be over 500 yards away. Well, they're not in the boat, right? Or we'd be able to see them. Now, they must be swimming. That's what I think, but who are they? Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Get out of it, way! Move the rock! Ain't they finished with us yet? Sounds like a Britisher. Let's make sure. Who are you? Identify yourself! Identify yourself! Hey, mate! It's a Yank! Mate, they're Yanks! They're Yanks! They're ours! Help us! Help us! Survivors from Destroyer Electra! British sailors! Rescue party on deck! All stop! I want two good swimmers. Me, sir. I'll go with them, Mr. Lennox. Okay, get in the water and help them up. Aye, sir. The rest of you stand by to haul survivors. be 
25 or 30 of them, Captain. Yeah. Got in the crew, Ed. Where are we gonna put them? I don't know. At least they'll be drier than they are now. Electra had been sunk by gunfire on the morning of the 27th while attempting to lay a smoke screen. Its survivors had been in the water for nearly 16 hours. Some of the more seriously wounded died before they could be taken aboard. Others were in shock, sick from exhaustion and exposure. Still they came, and when they were no more, Captain Munson had 57 guests aboard a boat built to carry a crew of 42, a total of 99 men. There was no pharmacist mate. The S-38 was considered too small to carry one. You got a shirt, fellas. One ounce to each man. We'll get some food for you soon. Yeah, I... <sighs> Tell the doctor it's my leg. It's broken. Mr. Lennox will get to you soon, buddy. Just hold tight here. Hold him, Joe. Easy now, easy. Here, have some of this brandy. We haven't had any since we left Manila. The lucky man. Good, huh? Easy now, easy now. Won't be too long, we'll get you to Surabaya. Doc will take good care of you. Easy, take it easy. There's the morphine, sir. You know how to use it? No, sir, but there's a warrant officer named Freely taking care of some men in the cruise quarters. Get him up here. Aye, aye, sir. Officer Freely. Yep. Follow me. You know how to get morphine? Yes, sir. Let's take this box and eject everybody who needs it. There's one I passed in the cruise quarters. Looked in bad shape. He's dead, sir. Now, let's get the rest. Start with him over there. All right, sir. Rivet. Make sure that dead man is put up on deck before we submerge. It's too late, sir. Tell the captain. Aye, aye, sir. Level out at 60 feet! Captain, one of them just died. I think Mr. Lennox wants to bury him before we submerge. Put him in a basket. Tell Mr. Lennox we'll bury him when we get to Sarabaya. Aye, aye, sir. some of the men a chance to get up on deck. Read it away, Brad.
They know we're here. I think so. We'll know pretty soon. What are we going to do with all these people? I radio at Sarabaya. The Dutch hospital ship's going to meet us right outside the harbor. Why are you looking so worried? It's not about us. Look, Red, don't let onto our gas, but it's going to be touch and go if they make it. How do you mean? The Japanese are invading Java. Evacuation orders are out. Well, maybe the hospital ship will get them to Australia. Maybe. A big battle we saw last night. Combined forces lost four cruisers and two destroyers. What's left is scattered all over the ocean. Let's go. We gotta shake them, Red. The depth here is only 100 feet. Down slope. When they get within 3,000 yards, we bottom. them. It's a good idea, sir. Down scope. All stop. Let it settle on the bottom. Attention all passengers and crew. The enemy is coming close and we may be death charged. There will be no unnecessary noise or movement until the word is passed. Break for silent running. Captain, going away. Good boys, those Britishers. They haven't made a sound. It's too quiet. I've never heard it like this. We should hear those charges clearer than that. I can hardly hear them at all on sonar, Captain. I had one third. Bring her up to periscope depth. Bring her up to periscope depth. Captain, something's wrong. She won't answer her helm. She's stuck in the mud. Blow all ballast tanks. Whatever. Five feet. Yeah. Captain, a couple of guys just fainted. The oxygen's pretty low. Tell Mr. Forbes to bleed oxygen into the boat. Aye, aye, sir. We're breaking loose. the S-38's run to Surabaya took 14 hours. The air in the boat was changed three times. Darkness came slowly, but when it did, it was gratefully received. Who'd you hear that, Sam? The radio. They're 100 miles from Surabaya up the coast. You mean to tell me we went through all this just to lose these guys? It's still better to be a prisoner of war than to be dead. Most of them would have been if we hadn't picked them up. Keep it quiet. They'll not be able to hear us. Yeah.
Got a sign of their hospital ship. Two hours late. Oh, we're in the right position. We've got to get these men off of here. If I try going into the harbor, submerged. Now there's too many mines, Red. We can't take that chance. Bring up the searchlight. For an hour, Captain Munson signaled across the minefield, asking for help. It finally came. And the S-38 was led through the minefield to a barge. Berthing facilities had been destroyed by air attacks. After debarking the electric survivors, the S-38 was ordered out of the harbor. Java was in flames. The rescuers and rescued alike knew they would never see each other again. Captain Munson resumed patrol as ordered. Although nearly intercepted by enemy forces, the S-38 managed to infiltrate a convoy and saw its remaining torpedo sink one transport and damage another. Java was overrun in three days, although it did not formally surrender until March 9th. By then, the S-38 had been ordered to Perth, Australia. Then three months later to Melbourne for a complete overhaul. Hey, Joe, look! Well, sure, they got you. Yeah, how did you make it? Oh, well, we were just one jump ahead of them. It's bloody close, though. Captain, sir, good to see you, Freely. Mr. Lennox, really? When we heard you were coming in, we got together as many of the chaps as possible. I see your leg's okay. Did a perfect job, Doctor. I've been walking out of the wheat now, and all the other chaps get along just fine. Well, that's good, but I'm not a doctor. I'm the executive officer. We're shipping out in a new destroyer, sir. And on behalf of all of us, our undying gratitude to you and your crew. Good luck. Thank you. Well, Dr. Lamont, you've got the best hospital ship in the South Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Goodbye. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. And now I'm very happy to introduce to you Captain Henry G. Munson, who was skipper of the S-38 during the events you've just seen. Hank, I'm sure our audience would be interested in the footnotes you've offered to this story. Thank you, Tommy. One of them concerns the later information that the Dutch hospital ship we didn't meet was sunk by the Japanese just prior to the rendezvous. With Java being overrun, it was lucky that the Electra's survivors were able to reach Australia. It was indeed. Their escape meant a great deal to us. Not only because we'd stuck our necks out, but because we knew that men of their caliber would be hard to replace. There never are enough of that kind. I'll never forget the bravery and quiet heroism of those men, one in particular. I couldn't identify him, but from his voice I could tell he was young. Even though he was having trouble keeping his head above water, he refused to let anyone help him until his wounded shipmates were safely aboard. The tragic part of the story is that I was never sure he was among the men we saved. By the same token, you didn't see him go down, did you? No, the confusion made it impossible to know just what was happening. We can only hope he was one of the 56, Hank. Congratulations to you and your ship's company. This was a fine piece of submarining. Thank you, Tommy. Be with us again when we bring you another true and exciting story taken from the history of the silent service.